My name is Jim Smith. I'm going to be reading some pieces from my book, Back Off Assassin, New and Selected Poems from Mansfield Press. So the first piece I'm going to read, there's going to be a number of short pieces. The first piece is a piece called BP. BP was on fire, and as we rolled him round the room to put him out, each one of us threw ourselves on the pile, but he just blazed up. He consumed us all, and when they found us, they had to wrap what was left in foil. A small piece for BP Nickel. The Freak Brothers. We were a crew like the Freak Brothers living our lives out in an American comic strip. The bomb was perfect, well and truly armed, in place at the rear of McDonald's, and in the middle of tea two miles away we would slap our heads and remember the fucking safety was on. Speed back to the same building, dropping briefcases and losing whole wallets full of stolen ID to snap the one switch into place that was the key. Without regard for the timer reaching its appointed end, one step around the corner kept bluey, everything flying at us, Witnesses staring and us screaming across the street with singed hair and jumping into the car which now had a flat tire, pierced by a brick and racing away at a careful eye-catching hobble, singing, singing at the top of our disguised voices, not we shall overcome, but let's spend the night together. He's called Forgot to Tell You. Forgot to Tell You. I heard you say it was French. I heard you say it didn't matter, that there was sand at the bottom no matter how far we fell. I heard them shout a warning, Ay peligro tonto! I heard one after another of my excuses burn away in the atmosphere. I heard you had died in the Toronto General without me. A piece for saying goodbye to my old dog. Declarations of War. I'm sorry I never told my old black dog much of anything. We walked for literal years, both on what we knew was the sharp end of the leash, while I chanted, Arnie this and Arnie that, and real gems like Arnie and Jim, Jim and Arnie. I never told him why I stopped writing, or why I went to law school, or how I stopped drinking, or how I stopped smoking, or how I stopped breathing. Never took him to Nicaragua, or back to my childhood, or up in my spaceship. He was naked for 16 years, then he died. My favorite memory of Joanne's memories of me is when she told me she'd seen me at 2 a.m. in the icy backyard, picking him up and walking around on legs that never worked again. He kept whispering to me, Jim and Arnie, Arnie and Jim. We bought them for $37, which works out to just over two bucks a year, which is quite a bargain in the end. It's a mistranslation of a poem by Nicanor Para. It's called After Para's Self-Portrait. Consider, muchachos, being in conversation with the frail beggar. Or, say, a professor with an obscure license. He, the one who has lost the voice of the hacienda class. Dispute from death to taxes the hag's scarred but seminal horse. Which of us appears dearest when demented? Truly, that inspires lasting self-harm's escalation. Who decides to zap the blacks? What intervention of art is there in that part sin? Uh, don't forget Alberti. Hey, hey, yeah, you, right down here, in this dirty old box. I'm Raphael Alberti's poems, and I can't fucking get out. Let me out. Hey, cabron, don't walk away from me. This is Raphael Alberti's opera, strangling in a cardboard box outside the back door by the stairs down to the plaza. See, right here in the hot sun in Frigiliana. I can open up new worlds. I can cure that limp, sister. I'll whisper to you who took the Lindbergh fucking baby. I went away. I stayed away. I came back when that porcine mound of maggot shit finally started rotting. This is the thanks I get. Do not walk away. Do not walk away from me. Do not walk that way.
poem called 1957. It's the uh, pastoral poem. 1957. You take three loose bullets from the glove compartment. It's 1957. You are hot and sweaty and already not very tall. They are little spaceships you can escape in. You show them to your brother Kim. You show them to your sister Jane. There are some really nice rocks you've often run your hand over on the edge of the road. Hey, look at this, you say. You put a bullet on the rock. You hit it with a rock. It bangs. You fall over, but no one sees. Kim takes a rock and hits a bullet. There is a bang. Jane takes a rock and copies Kim. There is a bang. They walk over to see what else is in the glove compartment. You lie there, absorbing radiation. 